At one point, they were the puppet masters of the United States. The Enclave. The self-proclaimed continuation of the USA. In today's video, we're going to go over their origins and their purpose. Starting with before the war, and then we'll go over how they were after the Great War. The Enclave was the U.S. government's top secret organization. Originally, the Enclave was made up of high-ranking political, military, and corporate leaders. They also had military and federal law enforcement involved, but more so high-ranking people with a lot of power. Through meticulous planning, during the bombing of America, they were able to subvert the planning of other government officials who were not in the Enclave, making it so that they would perish in the bombings, while ensuring that the Enclave and the families related to the Enclave would survive long after the bombs. As I mentioned earlier, the Enclave was full of very, very powerful people, including the Presidents of the United States, members of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, award-winning scientists, high-ranking members of the military, wealthy industrialists, and so on. In their own opinion, they were the greatest assembly of minds on American soil. When it comes to fallouts in the United States of America, the Enclave was involved in many of the greatest conspiracies related to the federal government, such as covering the existence of alien life while using the technology to their own advantage. When opposing organizations tried exposing them, they were swiftly hunted down and eliminated. As the likelihood of a nuclear war approached, the Enclave invested into multiple contingency measures to survive the coming war. For example, one of their installations was the presidential oil rig out in the Pacific Ocean. The Enclave would also use vault techs network of underground shelters for a grand social experiment to test the occupants in unique circumstances. We'll cover more of that in another video, but what I do want to say is the original idea behind the vault experiment was to gather data for them to build a multi-generational starship so that they could settle another planet as they assumed the Earth would be uninhabitable after the nuclear war. On October 23, 2077, the Great War resulted in the destruction of the Old World and created the post-atomic wasteland that we would come to know. At this point, the United States government would cease to exist. As part of the Enclave's preparations for the oncoming war, they invested in multiple contingency plans, such as the presidential oil rig out in the Pacific Ocean and the White Spring Congressional Bunker, acting as the main hub for future Enclave operations. Members of Congress who made it to the bunker but were not part of the Enclave were executed. Communication between the White Spring Bunker and the rest of the Enclave was mysteriously shut off almost instantaneously with the bomb dropping. Due to their meticulous planning, this shouldn't have been possible. Without contact to the presidential oil rig, a man named Thomas Eckhart, former Secretary of Agriculture, proclaimed himself to be the President of the United States and Appalachian Enclave. Without opposition, Eckhart quickly took over the mission of the Enclave, ignoring his previous orders, shifting from a scientific mission to a mission of war against China, for revenge against them for dropping the atomic bombs. His plan was to use Appalachia's automated nuclear missile silos to deliver nuclear strikes on China to ensure their destruction. However, because of the automated systems, he needed to convince them that they were under attack so that they would go DEFCON 1 again and launch the nukes. In order to do this, he used a form of FEV to create all forms of mutated beasts and release them amongst the wasteland. Some of this was covered in my Super Mutants video. Thomas Eckhart is the man responsible for the Appalachian Super Mutants. He also created Scorch Beasts and massive mutated bats. Ultimately, this proved to be the breaking point for other members in the Enclave, 
forcing them to go into a bloody civil war that ended quickly with the death of every living member of the Appalachian Enclave. After the fall of the East Coast Enclave, the Enclave over in California were in disarray. Members from other installations of the Enclave within New California regrouped at Navarro. It wasn't until 2242 where a senior scientist named Autumn Sr. was contacted by a new president, John Henry Eden, who ordered the rest of the remaining Enclave in the West Coast to relocate eastwards to the Capital Wasteland. However, Navarro would remain as a fully operational enclave base. A few years later, the NCR would invade Navarro, leaving the NCR victorious and the enclave remnants scattered throughout the West Wasteland. The survivors of the enclave would flood east to join the Eastern Enclave, while others would attempt to join the NCR with limited success. Now that the Western Enclave was defeated, John Henry Eden over in the Capital Wasteland would use Raven Rock and its full manufacturing capabilities to create an army of robots and provide his new human army with military technology to maintain their technological superiority. Along with their military robots, a separate line of robots was created known as iBots. iBots would roam the wasteland, spreading the Enclave's message of hope and promise of the pre-war America returning. During this time, the Enclave would maintain a low profile, rarely being seen in the wasteland. Using Raven Rock and their Air Force base, they would slowly rebuild their military power and undergo a number of research projects to develop their technology. It wasn't until the year 2277 that the Enclave emerged from hiding to begin a large-scale campaign. This was because of Project Purity, a massive water purifier in DC was activated. Ultimately, the Enclave would raid the facility and take it over. However, they would not have the part necessary for the purifier to function. Instead, they would follow the Lone Wanderer until they came across the part necessary for the purifier. They would then capture the Lone Wanderer. However, Colonel Augustus Autumn would defy President Eden's plan to contaminate the water with the FEV and instead would cleanse the wasteland. He did this so that the wasteland would establish the Enclave as saviors instead of fearing them. However, the Enclave's attempt would suddenly be stopped by a surprise raid by the Brotherhood of Seal. A pre-war war machine, codenamed Liberty Prime, would lead the attack, leaving the Enclave defeated and Project Purity in the hands of the Brotherhood of Seal. Following the Battle of Project Purity, the Brotherhood would continue to use Liberty Prime in several other attacks against the Enclave. However, the Enclave would destroy Liberty Prime using a weapon involving many nukes to destroy it. After some time, the Lone Wanderer would retrieve components for a pre-war weapon that would give the Brotherhood an advantage in the war. The Lone Wanderer would eventually assault the remaining Enclave stronghold finally eliminating them and removing the enclave of their last known major command center. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, go ahead and like and subscribe. Uh, I want to apologize for the delay in the upload. Um, it was supposed to come out Sunday morning, but I had some computer problems and my editing software wasn't working properly, but I managed to get it working and here we are. Uh, I'm sure there's some details that I missed. If so, go ahead and leave them down in the comments. Uh, also comment what you would like for me to work on next. I do plan on doing an overall timeline of all the Fallout games. Uh, however, it might take some time to work on that. So we can do some other lore videos in the meantime while I'm working on that one. Anyways, thanks again for watching. I appreciate you guys so much. I love all the love and support you guys give me. Thank you again and have a good day.